Uh, today, we're going to actually talk about top three questions that users have in ShareFile. Uh, we've kind of collected these over the time, a uh, time period and understanding some of the frequent questions you come to support with. And we wanted to be sure we shared that to everybody today. And I, I feel this is a, a great kind of um, place to actually talk about it because uh, we do have a nice list of panelists that are joining us today. Um, so as Delia said, please ask those questions as we go through the session. We're going to have time uh, after this to be sure to try to answer some of those live and, and, and of course, extenuate some of the demos that we actually can provide. Um, so, but as always, try to ask those questions while the session's going, because we do have those panelists ready to answer those questions. Um, so my name is John Bartell. I am a senior customer success engineer in ShareFile. I've been with ShareFile for about seven and a half years now. Um, I've been in the support arena, the pre-sales arena, and now over at our customer success engineering role. Uh, it's a great role to be because we do host things like this as our webinars, and uh, we do help, of course, clients get the most value out of ShareFile. So if you see us around, uh, awesome. You'll probably see our names within your account. Um, and we're actually going to talk about just actually how to contact us as a CSE uh, after we go through some things in terms of how you get support. So we're going to talk a little bit about the differences from support and the customer success engineering role. Um, today, I'm awesome to, uh, I'm glad to introduce Mary Lou. She's one of my associates. So I'm going to let Mary Lou go ahead and introduce her, herself. Mary Lou. Thank you, John. Good afternoon, everybody. And thanks for being here with us today. Um, I am also a customer success engineer. been with ShareFile coming up on five years now. I've spent the first three with technical support, so I've seen seen my share of questions. And now as a customer success engineer, I help my customers get the most out of ShareFile, and I'm super glad to be here. So thanks, John. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we have a, a couple of slides here just to go through for today, and we're going to get to the bread and butter. But as always, thank you so much for joining. We, again, really appreciate your time joining us. Uh, I feel these are really good uh, webinars to, to join and get some information out of. And like I said, it's, it's a good avenue to ask those questions that perhaps that you had on your mind. Um, this is the platform to do it. Uh, so definitely, again, ask those questions in the Q&A section. We'll be happy to answer those. And uh, again, hopefully we'll get to some later on that are more pressing where we can demo those things out as well. On the agenda today, um, we're going to go through some tips around resetting passwords. This is a pretty constant ask in support, believe it or not. Um, obviously, you're dealing with a lot of external clients, right? Your clients that you're working with to retrieve files, to share files, um, and there's all walks of life that are interacting with your share file instance. So uh, we do see quite a lot of that where either employee or client forgets that password, what's the best approach? What are some tips and tricks to be sure that you as an administrator or even employee can help facilitate uh, getting, of course, those shares across to the client properly? And again, if they have problems with logging in, you know, how to approach that. Um, then we're going to review how to create share and request link settings. Um, you know, I, I think this is a very basic kind of demo in the sense, but we do get a, a lot of questions about um, what are the right settings with your share and request links? Um, how do you set those up? And what are some other differences that we have in terms of collaborating with clients? So I'm going to go over that. Um, and then we're going to go over the reviewing of folder permissions. Uh, this sometimes is a big gotcha because a lot of people, instead of just sharing links or request links, um, you know, people add individuals to folders, and we do have that experience where we can add somebody to a folder where they permanently or temporarily have the ability to access data within a folder that you create. Um, so again, kind of really showcasing what those differences are when we are talking about sharing and requesting and also adding people uh, in the folders, and we're going to highlight some of the permissions around that. Um, we're also going to talk about resources and how to access those resources, how to get help. Uh, we're going to bring in Alexander, like we said, he's from our supportability team, where he's going to talk just about how to open up a case, what's the best approach. Again, more so gotchas when you're going through that process. We tend to, of course, hear a bit of that as well as just, you know, how do I get help? 
Um, and then we are going to talk a little bit about how to talk to us as your customer success engineer. So that's another fun way of, again, getting a hold of somebody to help you through and guide you through ShareFile. All right. Um, so let's get the demoing. I'm going to pass it over to Mary Lou first for her first section around password resetting. So I'm going to stop sharing here. And Mary Lou, if you want to take it away. All right. Thanks, John. Share my screen here. So the first thing that I'd like to talk about today is, as John mentioned, we're going to talk about passwords and password reset and what happens when you put in your password and it says it's wrong because that happens, whether you think it's the right one or not. Sometimes it just happens. So this is our current um, login screen, which is split. Left side is for an employee user login. If you have single sign-on enabled, it will be over here. And on the right is for credentials. And anyone who is using single sign-on that doesn't have to can also use their, their credentials. So I'm just going to quickly show you what happens when you log in and it's wrong. Okay, so you get the username and password was incorrect. Simple, simple, forgot password. It will send you an email to reset your password. You'll come back, you'll put the correct password in and you'll be able to sign in. Have two-factor authentication enabled and you're going to be able to get right in. If you trust this computer, it's going to not prompt you every time when you log in. <laughs> okay, good that this happened so that I can tell you why it happened. I had the share file account up on my bar since about a half an hour ago and I didn't use it right away. It, the login screen was just sitting there. If you let your login screen sit for more than 15 minutes, it times out and that's why we had this experience. So if that does happen to you and you say, oh, I, I just left it up, just refresh and you're gonna come right back here. Use the correct password this time. And my password is incorrect again. But it, you know what? It's not my password that's incorrect. It says username or password is incorrect. So you can go back and look, check your email address. I have a dot right here. That was the correct, incorrect piece. So it isn't necessarily your password. So always check your email as well. And there we are in our account. So, that covers that. I'm sure quite a lot of you have had clients email you, call you, text you. I can't get into my ShareFile account. It wants me to log in and I can't reset my password. So this happens for a couple of different reasons, but the main reason it happens that they cannot reset their password is because they never had a password to begin with. And if you don't have a password already, you can't reset your password. So this go is going to get into how we create our clients, how we share with our clients, how we request from our clients. So um, the first thing that I'd like to talk about is if you create your client just by sharing with them, you, you share with the client, they're not yet a client, you only ask for name and email to access, it's going to um, put them into the system with a name, but they don't have credentials because they've never activated. So if you are an Outlook plugin user, which many, many of our users are, you want to make sure that, and I'm just gonna pop into, um, your admin will have this section, of file settings. And we wanna make sure, 
just like John has the test account here, email recipients. And this says only for Outlook. When, you, when you're using the Outlook plugin and you share with someone that is not yet a client and email recipients is your default, then the system is going to recognize whether they are a user yet or not. And if they are not yet a user, they will receive an activation email, which will allow them to create credentials. Um, so anytime you share anything with them later that requires any kind of login, if you're sharing to require login, if you add them to a folder that requires login, anything, they will already have credentials. And if they're faced then with the forgot, you know, I, incorrect password, then they will be able to self-service the reset for the password. But if you don't have email recipients, you've only asked for name and email when you've shared with them, but now you need them to log in, they're not going to be able to do that reset. So they're gonna contact you and say, hey, I can't reset my password, can you help me out? Yes, you can. So what you're going to do is come over to people and you'll see right at the bottom of people, resend welcome emails. You'll be able to go into your address book, find them because they will be in the address book. They just have not activated. And you're going to send them this welcome email and this allows them to activate and create credentials. Um, let's see, in the case that you have created them outside uh, in the same manner, but outside of the Outlook plugin, if you've shared from um, the desktop here or from a link and you have in the same manner, you've only done name, email, they were created as a user, but they don't have credentials, you'd do the same process. You'd come over and resend a welcome email to them. And that's going to um, take care of things for you. But be sure if you are the Outlook plugin user that you're, you've, you've got your, your admin to set email recipients as the, the default, there's no downside to having email recipient as your, as your default in the Outlook plugin. Um, another good way to ensure that people have activation and credentials is to create them before you share with them before anything else. And you can create your, your clients here. And when you create them from this scenario, then they will receive an activation email. Let me show you activation. Because when John added me, to the account, this is what it will look like that they get. You've added them to the share file account and it will tell you right here, activate the account. This is where it's going to allow you to create credentials. Um, so let's see, they had one more thing. Oh, adding to a folder. You can also create people when you add them to a folder. So if we're, in a folder and we want to add someone, hit under people, we're gonna add people to the folder. And if the person doesn't exist yet, we can create new user. It's, it's basically just the same way that you're creating over at the people. And when you add them, they'll get the same type of activation email so that they can create credentials and see the folder that you have added them to. Um, something else that I wanted to go back to, not sure that I, uh, okay. So this looks a little different. This is what you all will be seeing over the next week or two. And this is what we're calling our new sign-in experience. You'll see that it is not split any longer. There's just a place for your email. And if you're a single sign-on user, you will enter the email associated with the account. And when you continue, it will, it'll default into your single sign-on experience 
or it will ask for, for your password. But things are meant to be simpler and, you know, look better. It's going to be a, a, a nicer pro login process. So um, if you are not yet seeing this, then you will be able to see it over, the, like I said, the next week or two. Um, I think that's all I had. John, did you have something else that I'm missing? Yeah, I think, you know, maybe one of the things just to talk about briefly is just, you know, we get a lot in support is that, you know, we have clients, employees that don't get a reset email, um, oh, yeah. you know, when they go through that. Any Anything just to kind of mention there quickly about that? I think that's always sure. pretty top of mind. Sure. So um, if you're if you're not seeing the email, because password reset emails are only good for 15 minutes. Um, that's a security measure, and, and it's good to only be good, good for 15 minutes. Um, but if you're not seeing it within the first minute or two, um, check your spam folder, your junk folder. Um, lots of times, you know, there are filters on your email that are going to shift them into these other folders. And so check with those. And if you're still not seeing anything in spam or junk, then you'll be wanting to ensure that you are allowing sharefile.com um, emails into your service so that you can receive them. Yeah, I think that's pretty important, Mary Lou, when we're talking about that. Now, um, we probably have a mix of people joining today, but more so also for the administrative side. I think it's always good to double check those domains that are coming in from ShareFile, because by default, we are using our own email notification server. Um, so I do want to post that in chat here um, for everybody that is kind of wondering what domain they're coming from. Um, this way, again, as an administrator, you do have uh, the ability to check any kind of whitelist that you might need to put those domains in that sometimes comes in often where, again, we can't see it even in spam or your junk folder. It could be that your mail server is totally blocking that domain. And it's always just a good reminder for administrators just to double check those that you aren't actually blocking those or it's going to uh, any kind of filtration before it even gets to the recipient. So I did post that in the chat just so uh, people are aware of that. But yeah, I, I think that was great, Mary Lou. I think that covered quite a lot. And I feel you hit on pretty much anything that I can think of when it comes to just kind of the password resetting, especially with clients. So mm -hmm. awesome. All right. Thank you. Very good. So I'm going to take back over my screen share. Okay. And let's get back over to a couple other topics now. Now that we talked a bit about just kind of resetting, getting your clients collaborated, you know, seeing maybe some issues where they're having issues trying to access the, the share link or the request link that you're sending them. But let's get a little deeper in ter uh, terms of just setting up those shares. So Mary Lou was awesome to kind of go over that experience where we're having those problems. But how do we get to those problems in the first place, right? Because obviously the client needs to get to your share file instance to be able to see that data or the file that you're actually sharing with them. So let's talk a little bit about creating those share links and a couple of nuances about them. Um, so right off the bat, just to kind of start as a scenario, if if I'm, uh, of course, let's take tax for uh, the, the perfect reason that we're kind of having this because we do see a lot of these questions in the accounting and legal side. Um, that's where Mary Lou and myself are actually in, in terms of verticals and dealing with clients in that vertical. But a lot of times um, we do get confused around um, when do I send a share and when do I add them to a folder? We're going to get to more of how to add people to folders and the permissions. But if I just need to send something, say, to Mary Lou very quickly, it could be a file or two, it could be a whole folder, but I don't necessarily need to send them anything else other than that. Um, creating that share link is preferably the way to go. There's two ways we're going to talk about that today. Uh, first, when you do log in, you're going to have a nice shortcut section here. And to start off, you'll see the first two options here is your share link and your request links. So share files and request files. So again, when we're talking about share files, I'm actually sharing or collaborating with somebody, I'm sending them something. And then request files is when I'm asking for something, uh, say from the client that I need within share file. So when we first start out with sharing a file, 
you're going to see it's going to ask you where that file is. We could just simply drag and drop a file from our desktop. I have a nice how-to that I want to share over to Mary Lou. Um, but furthermore, I can add it from both places. So if it was already existing in ShareFile, say in one of your folders, um, I can simply go in there and click down. And I need to add actually a doc template for it because she needs to edit this so that um, it conforms to the template that we have. So we have two items ready to go. One that's already living within ShareFile and one that I just grabbed from a, a local source like my desktop. Uh, so then I could continue. And now you're presented with two options here. Um, either we're going to send to Pacific people or get a link. So uh, just as something to kind of cement in your mind, those are the two ways that we're able to send or collaborate with clients when we're talking about sharing these documents. So uh, quickly to talk about get a link, it's just like it says, it's basically creating a unique link to get back to these documents so the client can see them. Then we have send to Pacific people. That is our emailing option. So this will actually send an email from our share file system with those links in it. So this way you don't have to say grab the links and then put them in your own email. Um, but that's your discretion. If you feel it's easier to use your own email, the get a link could be the way to go uh, for that, uh, that way of collaborating. I'm gonna first talk about sending to Pacific people. I feel this is a great way to do it within the system because you do have a little bit more trackability when you're doing with sending to specific people because you do have your own inbox here. So you could track sent items from here. So that's one nice way in terms of just doing it through email. But let's just get into the options real quick. What are some ways that I can secure these documents? So when I do give it over to Mary Lou, um, we do have a very secure way of accessing that document. So there's no kind of say threat of somebody intervening uh, and being able to grab that data. So first off at the top here, you're gonna see what we're allowing Mary Lou to do. Um, so you'll see a view, which if I'm just choosing view, only what Mary Lou is gonna be able to do is view those documents and preview them. Um, because they are Word documents, she will actually have it open directly in the browser. So there's no need to actually have, say, a separate Word document or anything that they would have to open, uh, say, locally on their computer. Um, now, download allows them to view and download those documents and then do what they will with them. And then the edit option, this is our co-editing option through Office. Um, so as you saw, those are Word documents, so things like Excel. Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, uh, anything that Office provides, you'll be able to edit those live within ShareFile and we can actually collaborate together. So that's that's actually a really nice feature when we're talking about collaboration and editing something very quickly. All that is kept within the ShareFile ecosystem. So that's, again, a nice touch if you didn't have to download, edit, and send back. We do have the direct way of just editing these documents. Uh, down below, you do have the access expiration. So this doesn't mean it's deleting the files that I chose. This is simply saying the link that I create to access these documents will expire after the given time. I'll show a little bit about how to customize this and how to lock down some of these options a little later on for the administrators that are in here. But I can have this, uh, say, go down to one day. So basically, Mary Lou has 24 hours to be able to, say, download these documents and do what she will with them. Down below, we do also have a require recipients to log in. So this, if gets to Mary Lou, she will require herself to log into her client account that you've set up. As she showed you, there are many different ways to create that client. Uh, the great way, though, is if they're, they aren't already in the system, this will actually activate the client for you. Uh, during that process when she does get the email notification, which is actually a very nice touch. And again, another reason maybe sending to specific people, meaning using the email option, is a good way to go. A couple other options we won't get too deep into today. Um, you do have one that always links to the latest version of the file. So if you do have a different version of that file, which we do have something called versioning within ShareFile, it will always link to the latest version that you have within ShareFile or what I have given to them. You do have watermarking, so we can 
watermark and put an overlay onto the documents when I send it to them. So this way to help secure that even further, if there was somebody snooping behind Mary Lou uh, and they're taking pictures, at least that watermark is there. So in case somebody, of course, distributed that document and put that out there for the world to see, at least you have a watermark to showcase that there's something overlaid and uh, we have many different options display uh, to display on that watermark. Down below, we do have the notify me when this is accessed. This is super important. Um, I always say to be sure to have this checked because if Mary Lou opens it up, I'm going to be notified by email that she has accessed it and either viewed it or downloaded that, uh, that document I sent. And then I can always send a copy of this email to me. So after that, uh, down below, we do have an encrypt this email just as a precaution here, we do allow you to encrypt the body of the message when I'm sending through email. Your data at rest and in transit is already encrypted, so you don't have to worry about that. It's not essential that I have to check this to have it encrypt that data. Uh, this is just further providing more security if it is, say, very sensitive data that I'm sending to Mary Lou. And I want to be sure that if some, of course, suspicious activity is going in her email or somebody intercepted it in some way, that at least the body of the message is encrypted and they wouldn't be able to actually see that message and what it contains without uh, Mary Lou's account um, signing into her share file client. Down here, you do have the way to send to recipients. As I mentioned during the settings where I'm requiring them to sign in, say for instance, that this client I've never worked with before, I can put in anyone's email address here and I can start typing it in. And as you can see, it will suggest people that are already in your system, but if they weren't, uh, it won't show them in the list. But when I send this out, it will send the activation link kind of just like what you saw with Mary Lou when she demonstrated that she got an activation link for her uh, for her client because obviously she wasn't a part of my instance already. So it's going to be very similar in terms of what she would get as a notification when I do send this to her and she's not part of my share file instance yet. Uh, so for time's sake, we're just going to choose John Doe. I had John Doe already here. I do have my subject and my message, so I can customize my message just like any email if I wanted to, and the subject of the email will come up as such. Um, a little note down here is if you do have this remember subject and message, this will remember what you have actually have in here. This is just a caching of that data. So if you did clear cache on your browser, that option would be wiped. So just as a small mention, because that does tend to come up. But other than that, I can hit send. And then John Doe gets that message that I sent it to him. Now he'll get that email notification and he'll actually be able to see it. And just to kind of showcase what that looks as a client experience is John will actually get that email and as you can see, I did encrypt that message. So just to showcase what that looks like, and it does show this link will expire, say tomorrow, uh, because I set it to one day. If I click this, it's going to require me to log in with my client account. Again, John Doe's already added, so he would just go through and open this up as a normal uh, share that, of course, he gets. So that's one way through the email option, but let's just choose another option in terms of getting a link. Now, again, getting a link allows for the ability just to copy that link and say, for instance, maybe you're using a chat program like Teams or Slack within your company and you need to send a, a, a quick share to somebody either internally or maybe you're talking to this client through Teams or Slack and you just want to send them a quick link of this, uh, these two shares that I'm going to send. I'm just going to use that actual doc temp uh, template first. And then you'll see, and by the way, as you see, when I chose just one, it's a little different of a view, but also it will warn me. Um, we did bring this in recently that um, uh, that will tell you that if this is set to anonymous, um, that of course it is something that anyone could be accessing. Um, but as you can see, it generated that link for me. As you can see, I already had one created previously, but I just went and generated a new one. But from here, again, just like the email option, if we choose, oops, looks like I had an issue there. Let me actually grab, actually, I'll grab a new one from my computer. I'll grab that how-to. This way it starts fresh. So if we continue, 
we can actually bring that up. Now, one thing I did want to mention, this was good that I actually chose this other document is we do have new AI uh, capabilities within ShareFile, which will actually highlight if there was any kind of say PII information or personal information within a document, we will recommend certain share link options for you to change uh, so that when you are collaborating with a client, you are setting those link options optimally. Um, but same thing here, we can go and either recommend those options and that will change. We can go to edit those. And as you could see by default, I'm actually set on anyone as meaning anyone can actually publicly access this link if I kept it that way. As you saw when I'm sending an email, I did have that check mark box for requiring people to sign in. When I'm creating a link, you do have the option a little more extended in terms of how public you want this to be. So we do have the two options above. You have the anyone, which is just anyone can access that link. If I send it out, it's not going to require Mary Lou to sign in or John Doe to sign in. If I had anyone with public information where it's going to require their name and their email, that doesn't entail them the required to sign into their client, but at least provide some information. So we see who, of course, was accessing that data. But as you see, my recommender did recommend choosing the client and employee user login option. So this will require, if they're a client or employee, to require the sign-in option, and that's what it's recommended. Or if you just choose, if it's just an employee I'm sending to, you could just require the employee to sign in. So I'm going to choose recommendation there. As you saw, remember, I still have my expiration. I have it after one day. I have always used the latest version, which really wouldn't matter because I chose that file from my desktop. I know that's the latest version and I can create and copy. There we go, creates the link. And as you can see, it generates that link here and I could simply copy that. And now again, use whatever method I can wanna use or I say, again, I'm using chat. I can post that link in there to Mary Lou or John Doe and they'll be able to access it based on the security settings that I had there. All right, so yes, Mary Lou. Can I po pop in here for, for just Absolutely. a second? Absolutely. So you just created a link that requires sign-in. We want to be sure that you're sending that to someone who already has credentials, because if someone gets that link that does not already have credentials, they're not going to be able to do a forgot password to get a password. They'll need to be calling you to get a welcome email. So when you're sending something for sign in, you have to ensure that they are a user with your company that has credentials already. Yeah, that's actually a really excellent point. And that's, that's why I say more of the sending through the email option is great because if they weren't already a client, that will activate them during that same process that they get the link. But yes, to Mary Lou's point, I think she brings it up perfectly, if I did just use a link and I did require sign-in and I sent it to, to say Mary Lou before she had a client created, she's just going to get a pop-up to say, hey, you need to log in. And that's going to confuse people because they're going to say, well, I've never actually had an account. And this is going to generate more time where they would have to go back to you as the employee or you as the administrator and share file to create that client first. So I think that's a very good distinctive way of understanding what is the approach you need to take when you are sharing something? Um, because if I did come in here and created that link, just like I showed you, and I pass that over, again, you're going to be losing time because then now we're waiting on the client creation before they can actually get into it. So that's why I say definitely the email method is the way to go. Uh, and I strongly recommend that. But if you are getting used to ShareFile and you know I've worked with this client before they have a client account, then using the get a link is, is definitely uh, the method that you can use to help customize that a little bit better. Very good point, Mary Lou. Thank you. Um, let's talk directly about also request links. I'm not going to spend too much time because I want to be sure we move on to everything else that we have. Um, but when requesting a link, we do have the same options, just like we had with sharing. The big question that we're always going to be asked when we're creating a request link is where these files are going to go. First off, by default, it's always going to go to your file box. Your file box can be seen under your folder section and under here. This is a temporary space for when, say, for instance, you don't have a folder you want to put in requested files into. 
Um, it will go based on the retention policy that you have in ShareFile. Uh, if that's not uh, set, then it will only last with, uh, in 180 days of existence within your file box. Uh, so just be cautious of that. I always like to talk about that because people tend to just create the link in without choosing a location. So again, if I'm working with John Doe and I said, hey, I need some files from them, um, I want to be sure that it's a folder that I have created for John Doe. For instance, I have a customer folder that I've created for him. Be sure you select that first and then be sure then to check off which one you want to do. Again, the get a link has the same options like we just went through. If you do require a sign in with that, just like we have in here, as a warning, again, they're going to be requested to log in first. If they don't have that client account, there's no way the system will understand if they have a client account or not, because there's no validation of who I'm sending this to, right? That's why I always say when we're actually creating this, to send to specific people, because if I just chose, say, John Doe, and he didn't have a client account, uh, and I do request that he does sign in, as you saw here, uh, it will, again, activate or help create that account before he actually logs in and can send files. So I think it's very important. So just to imitate what we're talking about, again, get a link and sending it through email, have two different ways of doing it, but just be cautious of the way you approach this when, if you know you have a client account, you're working with them for a while, get a link is great. But other than that, I say going through the, mess, uh, the message option is the best way to go because you do have an inbox to be able to track all your sent items through email. All right, one other thing I want to talk about is when we're actually creating or sending shares. As you saw, I did that through the dashboard. But say, for instance, that data already existed within ShareFile within a folder. I can always go into that folder and check off the options or the files or even a whole folder to share. And you'll see that share option at the top here. Same options that we'll have is either send to specific people or get a link. But I wanted to quickly show that because there are sometimes confusions that we get in support where they are not sure what to do in terms of the differences or if there is any differences. Um, I did want to remark that very quickly, but these are the same options we just went through. The only difference is, again, I went to the folder where the data exists and that I have access to, and I'm able to share uh, from that side. So just to differentiate between the dashboard versus going through a folder itself. Lastly, for sending requests and shares, Mary Lou did touch on this very briefly, but I wanted to highlight this for the administrators out there. As you saw, I had different options to choose from in terms of how I can secure the share even further. I did have anonymous options over here. Um, if you say you wanted to lock down your account even further, be sure to go under your admin settings, advanced preferences, and file settings. Again, this is just for the administrators out there. If you don't see it, you could just be an employee um, without that administrative permission to be able to access this. But the great thing here, as I could take these anonymous options out for my share links and also do that for my request links. So then this, this will basically disallow any employee to be able to choose the anonymous options that we have at the top there. Furthermore, we do have the ability to change, of course, the different default permission. So if I did have anonymous already still checked, I can have it so that just by default, at least it goes to client employee user sign in. So if there was somebody in a rush sending out a share and they didn't get to the edit option section, uh, it will always say default to your client and employee sign in. So this way, at least you're solidifying that at least you know that they're actually sending it uh, with some security in mind. Also for your maximum uh, access expiration, you could set that as well. So for instance, if I said my max is going to be seven days, they're only going to see up to the seven day mark in terms of the expiration. So if you do have some sort of compliance within your company so that there's links that aren't just lingering out there forever and somebody actually chose never, uh, you could come in as an administrator and set this to after seven days. And this will prevent users from going past that uh, and this abiding by your compliance in terms of accessing data externally from your company.
You also did see I demonstrated a little bit of that AI where it did recommend uh, certain changes based on the data that I'm sending. If you did have uh, the need to turn that off, if there was some concern, security concern to turn that off, you could come in here and simply disable that, and that will disable uh, the share options and uh, disallow the ability to show you what is, um, of course, uh, what can be changed there. Lastly, I wanted to go over to our folder section and talk a little bit about permissions before we get to uh, some of the support side and how to access or how to contact us as CSEs. Um, but wanted to showcase two things here with folders. You will always see a personal folder and a shared folder as it stands right now. Um, these basically have the same functionality, but as an employee, not a client, clients don't have personal folders, but as an employee, they will see these two. You can create folders and keep data in both of them and be able to share out just like I showed you. Um, but tend to think your personal folders as a means of keeping data in there that maybe you're just working on. I tend to always recommend if you're sharing something out or you're adding people to folders, do that under the shared folder section. Because the shared folder section is a way to see what folders you're added to um, or if that you've created and shared out to other people. I did want to make that remark because sometimes there is a bit of confusion in where to keep that data um, and, of course, uh, differences in between. Let's talk quickly about just some folder permissions as it stands. Um, as you see here, first off, it's going to land in your item section here, but then we're going to get over to people. This is where all your different permissions will lie. Um, Mary Lou did showcase how to add people, and if there was a new client that wasn't already added to your system, you could do it here. But say, for instance, if I needed to add somebody new here, like my other John Doe account, I do have my folder permissions. So I do have the ability to just give them the view capabilities, download capabilities, upload. If you choose to allow them to delete, that allows them to delete any items within there. So please be careful. And then an admin. An admin allows you to add additional people to the folder and also gives you other abilities within the folder, like advanced folder settings to be able to change those. Be very cautious of who you add to this as an admin, because it's an admin, they'll be able to do pretty much everything that you see here in terms of the permissions. Um, then you do have folder alerts. So if I added John Doe, I want him to be alerted when there's an upload, I could do that, he'll get notified. And then also if there was a download, they'll be notified as well. And then I can notify the user by email. So you're going to see here, I already had one, so we didn't have to go through this, but you could actually see that when I added the other John Doe, I've been added to that, and then I can go to my folder. Again, just be wary if they're client already or create the client ahead of time so they can actually activate their uh, access uh, on their account and then be able to access that folder after. Um, and then you do have the apply settings to subfolders. So if I actually created uh, John Doe here, added them to the folder, I could apply these same settings that I have here to all the different subfolders that I have listed. So be cautious with that setting. Some people forget to uncheck that. And then they say, well, I don't want them to have access to that. Um, you know, things of that nature. Just be wary of that because also if I'm adding somebody to a root level folder, which this is, this is the highest level, um, this will propagate that inheritance of those permissions anyway to those subfolders. Really primarily, you know, goes to the point of when I'm adding people to different subfolders, any subfolder within that one would apply those same settings. So be cautious when we're talking about permissions there and we're adding people, uh, just kind of do a check through in terms of who you're adding and what permissions that you're giving them to. And uh, I'm actually going to bring in a special guest that we have today. His name is Alexander. He's in our supportability team. And Alexander, if you're there, I'm going to pass the buck over to your side and uh, allow you to share. He's going to actually talk a little bit about just how to get support and some nuances around that. And I've just walked through the best way to um, to get in contact with, with support. Um, one of the things I wanted to start with was just highlighting here our support page. Uh, so support.sharefile.com. And I'll put a link in the chat in just a moment on how to get here if you don't already have it saved or bookmarked. Um, a, a couple of great additions that we've recently added here to this page um, I'd like to highlight, one of them being uh, our communities. Uh, we've really been focusing 
um, and creating a community where people like yourselves can come, uh, ask questions, interact with each other, um, and really just create a great resource where we can um, be available to you in the community, um, not just in uh, support by opening a, a case with us, which I'll touch on in a moment. Um, in addition to that, you know, we really have uh, focused on listening to the voices of our customers. Um, and, and one of the ways we also do that is by uh, feature request. Um, so you can also touch here on the feature request page where you can submit requests um, for any, you know, additions that you may like to see. Um, and, you know, we're able to track those and work with the teams uh, that would be involved to, to get those pushed through or presented. Um, Another great resource here is definitely our uh, product documentation. Um, a lot of the questions that we have as new users, uh, you know, one of them being here, upload documents. Um, these are questions that we get often in support. And so we wanted to create a resource where customers can come and quickly search for how to, um, you know, how to issues, how to questions so that you can quickly get an article and, you know, have updated and you know in real time uh, steps that you can use to you know create a folder add a person to a folder etc um, one of the other things that i think i wanted to touch on as well was our status page uh, as you know products have issues at times we have outages um, and so one of the things that i really like to recommend to everyone is um, you know if you can Go to uh, our share file, PODI, or write signature status page, and I'd recommend subscribing to that page um, because if we do experience an outage, um, people that are subscribed to that page will get an email as soon as the outage page is updated. Um, so you'll be aware of any outages that may be occurring if you start to see that uh, while you're working with your clients or just working yourself. And lastly, I'd like to, to talk about uh, the best way to get in contact with support. Um, as we move into the digital age, one of the, the great additions that we've added to uh, our support channels was the ability to get in contact with a, a live agent via chat. Um, so if you saw down there at the bottom, um, it's on our support page. As you travel through the page, whether it's through communities, or feature requests, product documentation within the Knowledge Center, um, that that icon will be present so that you can quickly access our chat bot to start the process of getting in contact with support. So when you first get started, um, you could see here that, you know, it kind of just presents a few things, right? Uh, service status, which does link to the status pages, and it will go through and, and check the status of all of our products. Um, trending issues, which is highlights some articles for, for things that we're seeing in support. Um, and then you can then choose whether it's a technical support or customer service uh, type of issue. Um, so I'll go ahead and click on the technical support piece here. And the first thing that you are presented with are again, some of the, the known issues that we're seeing um, within support uh, cases that are being created. And so these are, these are articles here um, that just touch on um, the issue, if it's a workaround or troubleshooting steps, um, if it's for how-to information, like unable to upload or download files, folder permissions, et cetera, um, you can go ahead and, and select that. But if the issue you're having is not presented here, uh, simply we just click on something else and it's going to give us the option to search our knowledge base um, or to transfer to a live agent. So once you select that option, it's going to present you with a few different paths. Um, if we're having a technical issue, um, you're receiving an error or something's not working. Uh, if you have a how-to uh, question, whether it's related to configurations or settings, um, if you're having an account or billing issue, um, which gets you in contact with our customer service um, team, uh, Podio, um, these these options here are really just to get you directed and routed to the right team um, so that we can quickly assist you in answering those questions, um, including our sales team as well. Um, so let's just say for the sake of time, we have a technical question.
the next thing we'll be presented with is the contact field. Now, I've already logged in to the Experience Cloud here, so it, it's auto-populated some of my information. Um, but if I just quickly fill this out, we will type in how can we help today. It will then take a moment to get us connected to a live agent. Now, while this is transferring, um, you know, one of the great things about the chat has been that we've seen for our customers as we support all of you here, as well as your client users, um, is for the chat bot, uh, we are able to quickly answer questions that our customers and your clients have. Um, the average speed for answer that we've seen uh, for getting connected to a live chat agent is about 17 seconds. Um, and that's taking, you know, for the whole quarter as we factor in uh, tax season and, and things of things of that nature. Um, so we're really focusing on being available and being able to get to your questions, to address any issues you may have um, as quickly as possible. Now, one of the things that uh, are often brought up, and I'll end this here just so Dwayne doesn't uh, get confused on why I don't actually need his help, so I'll thank him later. Um, one of the questions that pops up from time to time is, Alex, what happens if uh, chat isn't, uh, I'm not able to resolve my issue within the chat? Um, we've heard our customers and as we've grown in the digital age, as we've grown in the, in, in the chat, using chat to, to solve our customers' issues, um, if there's an issue in chat and we're not really able to get that issue resolved or that question answered, um, within the allotted time, um, we've created an additional queue to where we call it our tier two queue, um, where if, if the issue just can't be resolved, um, what our chat agent is instructed to do is to then transfer that case to that specific queue um, where an agent will be assigned pretty quickly. Um, and then the agent will reach out within the allotted SLA time. Um, so that person will reach out to you via phone to be able to quickly hop on a call or schedule a call so that you two can troubleshoot that that issue, um, whether it be through via screen share or um, just talking on the phone um, to make sure that we can really understand the problem that you're having um, and get it resolved as quickly as possible. Um, so I thank you for your time. I know it was br very quickly. We grazed through everything, but again, just for the sake of time. I do appreciate you having me here. Hope to be back again. And uh, now that I'm done doing that, I'm going to pass it off to John, who's going to share the best way to get in contact with customer success. Yeah, awesome. Awesome stuff. I, I feel this is going to help a lot of people that just weren't aware of all the different avenues that uh, they can get support. So we're always continually adding in things here. So keep an eye on that page. Uh, for anyone who didn't see that page or the pages that Alexander uh, talked about, we did post those in the chat. Um, but the last thing I wanted to show to you is how to access uh, or contact, I should say, your customer success engineer. So those are individuals like myself or Mary Lou. We're typically tied to most accounts in ShareFile. I will say what I'm going to show you here is something that only mostly administrators with elevated permissions will be able to see. Uh, but definitely want to make this a point because as you can see down at the bottom right here, you will see a resource icon. Typically, it'll also kind of blink at you or indicate there's like a new notification. We are always adding more things to that resource center. But one of the new things is the ability to contact your customer success engineer. So this is a, a little just mock up what you'll see, but even better when we get to the next option here, just to show you a quick demo how that looks, is you'll see the resource icon. And once we come down there and choose it, you'll see the contact your customer success engineer. And then in here, you'll see the person that is dedicated to you. And that's a great thing. Tepe is not a bot. He's an actual person like myself and Mary Lou. And we are dedicated to that account. So you'll be working with us individually 
one, your account. So we understand your use cases. We understand how you're using ShareFile and the future of how you're going to use ShareFile. So we, we are attuned to uh, making sure that you're successful. Uh, think of us as, you know, your technical liaison in terms of just being sure that you're getting that value out of ShareFile. But wanted to show this because I, I definitely think based on what Alexander showed today about getting support when something is broken or you're not too sure of what's going on. And then also having your dedicated CSE to come in to help bring more of that value to educate and to train. Um, that is just giving you that full 360 view of supporting uh, you as a client from ShareFile, being sure again, you are uh, well taken care of. So uh, again, for administrators, Keep an eye out for that. If you need to contact us for anything, you're looking for training, looking for technical guidance, uh, definitely reach out to your CSE. But yes, thank you so much, everybody, for, for attending and see you on the next one.